This is the Friday the Nick podcast in association with the BMC podcast. And today, I'm going to let Jonathan tell you about our special guest. Gee, thanks for the heads up, Blake. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so today we have Melbourne Victory defender, football fern, and Blake's favourite player in the A-League and the Ferns, Claudia Bunch. So welcome, Claudia. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. So you'll quickly you'll quickly discover that this is like really serious journalism and you know we ask the hard questions. So just go with the flow. Yep, fire away. I'm ready for anything. Cool. All right, lead us off, Denise. Hey, so where is everyone today? Let's just set the stage. I am in Topo and it is a cloudy, miserable day. I am in my home of the Hutt Valley uh, in the Wellington region. Nice. Um, I'm in Auckland where it's also, oh, it's sunny now, but the weather has been awful. So a bit like everywhere else, I think. And I'm in Rotorua and it is absolutely hosing down outside. So all that bad weather that was in Auckland has come south and Denise, it's on your, it's on its way to be with you in about half an hour. It is absolutely bucketing down. Yeah, it looks like it's coming. <laughs> right on. All right, shall we do our signature question? Yeah. Please. How would you describe yourself as a footballer in three words? In three words, um, I would say I'm quite loud. Um, I like to talk a lot. So, yeah, my teammates might not like that, but um, I'm very loud on the field. Um, gritty. Um, and I'm going to say composed. Hopefully people agree with that, but we'll just roll with it. I like that from a defender because y you have to, like, communicate. Um, mm. you know, and so are you, are you the, is everyone like you? Or are you the main one? Like, who do you have to like twist their arm to be louder or how about on the football ferns? Um, yeah, there's a few people that are pretty vocal. I think a lot of the senior players, um, Ali Riley's definitely one, CJ, Katie Bowen. Um, yeah, a lot of the defenders are, are really vocal. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really helpful to have players in your team that um, can communicate um, for sure. And gritty and composed, like those are, <laughs> those are hard ones, you know, to, to be at the same time. I mean, like, how do you like, you're gritty, but you, you don't overly like, tell me a little bit more about those two. Yeah, I guess. Um, they go hand in hand, but also, you know, one probably shines more than the other at times, probably depending on, you know, where you are in a game. Um, Gritty, I think, as a defender, just, you know, doing your job and maybe doing the ugly stuff um, kind of goes without saying. It's kind of an expectation. Um, and then composure um, on the ball um, when there's, you know, high pressure situations, not getting flustered and just um, riding out those hard moments. So, yeah. Those seem like great things to have as a defender. <laughs> so, Claudia, this season, this season you got to play, like you were in one of the best back fours in the A-League, and then you had Casey Dumont behind you playing in goalkeeper. How good was that, like having Casey behind you and those players around you? Yeah, phenomenal. Um, Casey is an unreal keeper, um, the best keeper in the league in my non-biased opinion. Um, I also live with her, so she's a really good mate of mine. Um, yeah, she's had a really good season, and last season too, she was unreal. I don't think we would have got as far um, as we did without her. Um, and then the rest of the girls also had a really good season, and obviously having Kayla back um, as our captain and my centre-back partner was wicked and yeah, I enjoy playing with her. Um, she's an amazing player and a great person, and we get on really, really well. So, yeah, it was a good season. What do we have to do to get you to come to Wellington? Oh, well, whoever's coaching next season, they can uh, they can ask me that. Nah, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. One day I would like to play for the Phoenix. That's the 
the club I've been following since I've, you know, been taking football seriously. So, um, yeah, and the kits don't look too bad either, so. Yeah, they're cool kits. They have, like, you know, the the Maori stuff inside of them. They're they're hot kits. Yeah, no, nah, they're nice. Well, we we would love to be actively cheering for you and come back. Although, you know, I watched an interview with you on the Dub Zone, and they were talking about you going to Europe and things like that. Is that um, all balls are in the air or...? Or yeah, you- definitely. Yeah, I I definitely want to go over um, at some point, hopefully sooner rather than later. But yeah, my focus is just on this World Cup and then whatever happens after, um, we're just going to take it as it comes. But yeah, fingers crossed. Cool. Blake? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so you've got the World Cup coming up, obviously, but you did play um, some what some people may class as a golden era of uh, New Zealand under 17s and under 20s. So what was it like to be with such a fantastic group that gone on to do such uh, incredible things uh, locally and worldwide? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I think, yeah, my age group, um, we've been quite strong and especially the one below me so um the ones that came third at the world cup um was like a huge effort and no one was really expecting um them to pull out a result like that um but they had a great team and a great coach and i think you know our two age groups there's a lot more people playing professionally now um thanks to the phoenix as well i think that's been an awesome path for um girls to take and, yeah, it's really good seeing so many Kiwis playing in the A-League. Um, and not just the Phoenix girls, but I think most teams had one or two Kiwi players as well. Um, so, yeah, I don't think the Ferns have had that in the past. And hopefully, you know, more players can play in the A-League and then hopefully, you know, go and use that to play in other leagues uh, across the world. And that's only going to make the national team better. So it's very exciting. Um, and, yeah. Yep. Um, so, what did you? They're the, the, a very opinionated topic. So, the 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 Phoenix has some too. At the time of this recording, the Phoenix has some more restrictions in the league than, um, let's say a Sydney team or mm-hmm. a Melbourne team that you were a part of. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, do you think that need to change? Do you? Do you feel sorry uh, for the uh, team that they have to go through that? Um, And how can we stop them in the future for further expansion clubs? Yeah, I mean, without knowing too much about the ins and outs of getting a team in the league, I think um, just to, like, get it over the line, I know know it took quite a long time. And just to get a foot in the door, you kind of do have to make um, some sacrifices and you – you know, us being from New Zealand and with it being an Australian league, you kind of do have to meet halfway. Um, But, yeah, I mean, you see how well the men are doing. Um, So there's real value in, you know, professional teams from New Zealand. And um, I think the Phoenix, uh, you know, they're a good club, well-established now. And then hopefully um, if an Auckland team comes in, which it seems like it's potentially going to happen, they've got, you know, the Phoenix to follow um, as an example. And, yeah, there's obviously really good players in New Zealand from both women and men, so it's definitely valuable, and I think the APL can definitely see that. So it'll be awesome to have two or more teams from New Zealand in the A-League. It's really exciting. Yeah. Ooh, that or more was... (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I've been reading things, and who knows what's true, but, yeah, definitely an Auckland team would be awesome. They definitely have, you know, a sizable market um, that can, you know, support a team. Um, And, you know, I kind of go, oh, I wish it happened earlier. Like, I wish it, you know, like quicker and earlier Mm -hmm. so that, you know, the the people who are your your age had more of a professional experience coming through. You know, the Mackenzie Berries, uh, you know, whatever that, that, you know, they just had just a bit more 
you know, how does, you know, that the ferns have been falling in ranking. Mm -hmm. um, and it, you know, it guts us fans, but you know, it, it is just, you know, a, a product of, you know, an era. I mean, what kinds of things can you point to that, um, you know, you can talk about, you know, what's gone on with the football ferns? Yeah, that's a good question. And yeah, obviously with, the World Cup being only two, three months away. Um, we're definitely in the spotlight, probably more than we ever have been, obviously being at home. But I think, yeah, that's a good question. And it comes down to a lot of things. Um, I think it's, you know, like you said, that era, um, we had, you know, a team that were pretty solid for 10 years. Um, a lot of those players are still in the team, but a lot also aren't. And it's integrating, you know, people around my age. There's a, I think there's eight or nine of us that were all in my 20s. So, yeah, it's, the results haven't been um, great over the last 12 months, I'll be honest. But, yeah, that's just a, a step to success. It's going to take a while. Um, I think we've got a good group. And I think the style of football that we're playing is really positive. Um, it's just fine-tuning those things. And, yeah, we've got camp for the next two months. So we've got a lot of time to be spending together. Um, and I think that's the best preparation we'll get alongside playing some more international games before the first game. Um, yeah. Just to follow up with the, with the international games, I mean, as a, as a football Ferns fan, I mean, it was really hard to watch the Ferns like it did incredible into the lead up to 2019, but then, mm -hmm. you know, like a lot of national teams, they just get a few matches and, and frankly, not that many home matches. Mm -hmm. So you're right. It's like all of a sudden you're playing quality teams under the, the bright light of the home media, which mm -hmm. is more in tune with women's football. Um, you know, I, I, I feel for you guys cause you, you guys are, are working hard, um, but you're not you're not going to be in the middle of league play when it's the World Cup. You just have mm -hmm. now two months to hang out together and gel. I mean, actually, that doesn't happen a lot. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you're usually... like for, for Kiwis to like get some chemistry together and not just be this diaspora of Kiwis all over the world. Yeah. But how does that feel? And 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 tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, I'm really excited to spend um, like a good chunk of time with the team and pretty much everyone's coming back apart from the girls that are overseas in season. Um, but yeah, it's, everyone has the same challenge. Like you come into camp, you're in camp for like two weeks, you play, you know, two, three games at most and trainings are a little bit um, choppy and changey because, you know, you've got a game in a few days, so you can't um, practice a lot of the things you want to practice. But yeah, I think, um, we have a unique opportunity. Um, it's also good because I'm from Auckland, so I get to live with mum and dad again. Um, and, yeah, it'll be really cool um, to be with each other for a long period of time. And then also this is even before the pre-World Cup um, window opens. So we'll be together, um, I think, like two or three months. So hopefully we don't get sick of each other. I'm sure we won't. So... In the lead up to the World Cup, what are the, you know, like with that Ferns camp, what are the differences or what are the extras that you get that you don't get, say, in an A-League? Like, is there extra physio? Is there extra massage? Like, what are the Ferns doing around you that you that you may not have got in the normal in a normal regular season? Yeah, so I'm I'm yet to join the team because I'm just taking um, a week longer break because my season only just finished. Um, but the beauty of being in Auckland and being at home is we've got access to all of those things and more that you've just listed off. Um, so that's really good. And um, in terms of A-League, I mean, Victory have a pretty good setup there. So I imagine it will be quite similar, but with it being a national team and being at home, um, I think we'll have access to a bit, a bit more, which is really nice as a player. Um, all we have to worry about is, bringing our boots and shinies and showing up and training on the day. And then the rest is kind of done for us, which we're really lucky. So you just mentioned that you, yeah, you're with mum and dad at the moment. Who's your number one fan? Like when you're at the game, who was it that's there given it, you know, and you, you can hear them when you're playing, who, who might that person be? Um, they're both, um, yeah, really uh, supportive of my football but, yeah, I'll have to say dad. He was the 
the one that is always giving me coaching tips and mum's more there for like the emotional support and maybe when I don't want to talk about football but um yeah dad's the one that would drive me a lot of the time um and when I was younger he'd give me pointers and yell at me from the sideline but yeah I had to have a chat with him when I was like 15 I was like dad you need to stop yelling at me um but yeah they're both amazing and yeah hopefully they don't mind me they don't mind me uh freeloading again Uh, I'm sure they're thrilled Blake do you have any questions um so I'm gonna I'm gonna steal a couple of our quick fires if Denise doesn't mind it's a bit early, but I, we can look around a bit. So if you were on a desert island and you could pick, I'm going to be generous and let you pick a Melbourne player. If you could pick uh, one Melbourne player and one of your favourite items, what would you take? And who Ooh. would you take? Um, okay, the item, I would bring like a coffee filter or something because I love coffee so I like need coffee um even if it's just black coffee I'd bring like a coffee machine but there's probably no electricity on the island um and the person I would bring would probably be Melina Ayers because she's very outdoorsy she'd keep me alive um she's also really into surfing so maybe she can teach me how to surf while we're there um I just feel like we'd have a good time so yeah Insane line of questioning. If you could play a, a game of three on three, who would your other two teammates be from the Ferns or from uh, Victory? Hmm. I would say that's a really good question. I'm going to go with my Ferns teammates. Um, I'm going to chuck Anna in there. Obviously, she's just uh, an absolute unit between the sticks but um she also used to play like striker because we went to the same high school um so I've seen her bang in a couple goals um she's a good like number nine that holds up play and like brings others into the game so did be one and then also um Malia Steinmetz who is another good friend of mine um mainly just for the funny banter we'd have on the field and she's not bad either so (laughs) who would your opponents be retired or active um hmm. you better choose a bunch of retired old ones yeah that's what i'm thinking but i don't want to i don't want to like offend anyone <laughs> anyone that's like not good so that we can win <laughs> i can't uh, think of anyone right now but <laughs> so speaking of malia she had a pretty good season there and like in that last series at the ferns played she was dominant in the midfield so good choice Mm. Very good choice. Yeah. And Melina is like watching her play in that semi final game we where victory lost. She was on fire. Like and serious man, like she gets in game mode and she's like just focused. I mean, what's she like to play with when she's in that mode? Yeah, she's a great player and I think she's yeah, she's a different kind of striker to a lot of the other ones in the league. Like she, I hope she never hears me say this, but, like, she's not, like, super quick, um, but she's really smart and she, you know, is just always in the right place and is just, like, a natural goal scorer. Um, Even when her back's towards the goal, she'll always know where it is. Um, And she's good in the air, good off both feet. Um, Yeah, she's just a bit of a weapon in front of goal and having someone like that in your team, you just feed Mel. That's kind of the saying we have um, before every game. We're just like feed Mel and she just finishes. And yeah, it's, it's great. Um, yeah. Love playing with her. Cool. Now, speaking of, speaking of Melbourne victory, um, we, we're quite good friends with some of the active supporters over there, Bonnie being one and, and, mm-hmm. and the victory Vikings. How important is it for the players to have that support and that interaction with active support? What does it What does it mean to you as a player? Would you? Yeah, that's a good question. It's amazing, and ever since um, I moved to Victory, I hadn't. Well, it was my first professional um, club I've played for, and I hadn't had support like that before. Um, and obviously, the the game's growing, but um, yeah to have a small group of fans that come to all of our games. They even came to Wellington, as you guys know. Um, It means the world. And, yeah, we get to see them after the game. Win or lose or draw, we're just really happy to see them. And 
the girls um, we interact with them a lot. Um, they do their own player of the season, um, player of the game. Um, so yeah, their support means everything to us. And when I first arrived at Victory, um, when you're doing your induction and getting to know the club, um, the club mentioned them. So obviously they're a big part of um, the women's team and have been following us for a long time. So yeah, we love the Vikings. So one thing that we've noticed is that the Ferns don't quite have that same kind of coordinated support. It's kind of like people go and watch the Ferns as individuals or little groups, but there's not actually kind of a fan grouping as such. So hopefully something gets activated for the World Cup. Yeah, I hope so. Um, I think a big part of that is we haven't played home games um, up until this World Cup cycle I think the last game we played was in like 2018 or something like that like in Wellington and then even before that um the girls didn't play here often and I remember going to only one or two games growing up um so I think hopefully um if we play at home more we can get a bit more people on board and also you know people want to follow winning teams so if we start getting results I think naturally it will it will just happen so fingers crossed. Otherwise, my mum said she'll set up something. <laughs> mom, yeah, we'll, we'll be. In, I don't in know Napier. how I feel about that, but <laughs> we'll definitely be in Napier. That's for sure. With the the the, the flight of the Knicks banner, I think we got tickets right on the on the fence line, and and we'll be cheering you on. What is it like to make a World Cup roster? Like, how does that happen? How does that feel? Like, I mean, obviously you have like friends or acquaintances that make it some that don't like how do you navigate all that um that's yeah it's it can be tough um so I, well, I, I haven't made a ferns world cup team yet so yep. hoping i can do that very soon but um i can speak on behalf of you know making age group world cups it's yeah really exciting a little bit scary um but yeah if your teammates don't make it um, yeah, it is a little bit bittersweet as well because, you know, everyone wants to get selected, but that's just um, professional sport, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, hopefully, yeah, we can, yeah, hopefully I make it. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yes. Well, we hope you make it. So what kind of role models do you have? Like, it, think of either you now or you as younger. Like, who did you look up to? um or still look up to yeah that's uh it was a few different people I think when I was really young and like played every sport under the sun that I could um but we went to a NTC and Rosie White was speaking um and that was like my first interaction with the fern and it wasn't like formal or anything she just was seated in a hall um with some of my teammates that are in the ferns now like Malia Grace Anna um, and I just remember, yeah, those interactions with her and seeing how down to earth she was. I was like, you're so cool. Um, I want to do what you do. So she was definitely one. And um, a couple others I've picked up along the way, uh, Valerie Adams. Um, she's just a legend. And Ruby Tui. Um, also got to give her a mention. Um, and even just the girls I play with and that I've grown up with, um, I look up to a lot as well. You know, it's interesting. Paige Satchel said the same thing, like Rotorua really showed up at her school or something. Yeah. She, you know, living in Rotorua had no, like, just no access to these major markets. And yeah. Rosie Wright st strolled in. So that's, that's yeah. beautiful, actually. Yeah. I think there were quite a few of us at that NTC. Um, yeah, I reckon like maybe like a, a third or a good chunk of the team would have all been um at that uh meeting so yeah that's funny Paige said that we're roomies so we're just <laughs> naturally on the same wavelength I think that's cool um who are you cheering for right now like just in life you know like who who are you like yay she's doing well or he's doing well or um that's a good question um I've been watching and following the rugby a lot more and like the um super rugby the woman having a competition was so cool um and a teammate who me and a few of the other girls used to play with 
um, is doing amazing for the Black Ferns, Renee Holmes. Um, so she's just been killing it. So, um, yeah, I've been following her and honestly just, just my Ferns teammates, like we all keep a close eye on each other and how we're doing um, in, you know, our clubs. Um, so anytime anyone's, you know, doing well or win something um, with their respective team, it's always really good to see. Oh, do you message each other and say, great job? Or do you taunt each other and go, Argh. Oh, a bit of both. Bit of both. <laughs> if, we're, if we're playing each other, there's usually like a bit of friendly banter, but um, definitely praise when, when someone's done something good. How did you enjoy going to Turkey? How was that experience with the Ferns? Yeah, it was good. Um, Turkey was beautiful, an amazing country. Um, I think, yeah, it's – the games obviously didn't go um, as we would have hoped. I think the first game against Iceland was really positive for us. Um, and, yeah, the spots on the team are getting really competitive now. Um, so it's cool to see um, – cool to see that and then in trainings as well like there's not a lot of difference between you know the team that's starting and then the team the second team or the team that's playing against them um so I think from that perspective it's really positive and really exciting and something that we haven't really had in the past and what's your approach this year just real quick I loved your schedule this year it was it was hard you know it wasn't powder puff you know teams it was it was hard and you went to some places and you know from mexico to to um iceland to um i'm sorry was it nigeria <coughs> yeah oh. nigeria yeah <laughs> jonathan's gone <laughs> that's okay he'll jump back on i'm sure he will <laughs> yeah um all right can we do some weird ones yeah I'll I'll, go. you know okay so which teammate would you call if you had um, a crazy night and landed in jail? Okay. Hmm. Probably Paige. <laughs> nah, prob probably Paige. She's very reliable. Um, she's a really good roomie to have because I often will lose our key card. Um, and when we first started rooming together about a year ago in Korea, we learned pretty quickly that I shouldn't be the one to have the key card because I will lose it 100% of the time. So she is, yeah, she's very thoughtful, very um, reliable. So she would be the one to definitely get me out. And she answers her phone really quickly. Oh, Someone right. like Anna wouldn't answer and I would <laughs> be stuffed. So. And which which teammate would have got you into jail, like would have been with you in jail? That you Probably know. Anna or Malia. Yeah, trouble they are. Awesome. Um, which um, which teammate would you raid the closet of? Because you think they dress cool. Um, probably uh, maybe Daisy or Liz Anton. Yeah, mm. they've both got really, really good style. Um, so, yeah, one of the two, either or. Cool. We asked Sarah G Gregorius that. She's like, none of them. None of them. Maybe she's <laughs> the one with the best fashion then. <laughs> Speaking like a crusty veteran. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Love that. I don't have good fashion, so I can't say that. <laughs> Jonathan's like, do you have any more? Um, so where is um sorry where is the ferns camp where are you going to be based like is it in one center or do you move around no we're just in auckland um so yeah the big apple and yeah my hometown so nice and easy so how do you reckon vietnam are gonna be um i haven't watched them too much but i think they'll be very similar to um the Philippines, even though the Philippines play slightly different with Ante as their um, off road stage as their coach. Um, so, yeah, probably quite technical, um, really fast. But, yeah, we'll be studying them um, during camp over the next wee while. So, um, yeah, it'll be an exciting game. 
Because the thing that really surprised me about the um, series that you guys just had was how dominant Nigeria were. I went, I knew that they were getting really good quality, but I didn't realize that they would be that dominant. So I just wondered if they would probably be the same style. Yeah, um, I think mm. Nigeria, they were a very good team and they are ranked lower than us, but I think you can't really look too much at the ranking because with the players they have on their team, um, they've got Oshwala who plays for Barcelona um, and a handful of other players that play for top European clubs. Um, and just in general, they're athletic and fast. Um, and yeah, we just didn't match it and weren't good enough. Um, so yeah, it was a dominant display from them. Um, and I think there'll be similarities between, you know, them and Vietnam, but um, I don't think they'll be as athletic as Nigeria were because those girls were insane. <laughs> yes, very good team. Historically a very good team mm -hmm. and will continue to be a very good team, Africa. Um, I mean, that team in Africa has been the, the premier team, but, you know, Africa, as a continent will will get better like a lot of continents um so keep going ferns <laughs> anyone else finally from me um i've just been watching the um matilda series on disney plus getting ready for this interview because it has some content from the new zealand games in it so mm -hmm. how would you how would you like to see a similar uh, series filmed here yeah, it'd be very cool. I haven't seen the Matildas one yet, um, but obviously playing with Chids and, and KK, um, I think it's, yeah, awesome that they've, you know, got a chance to talk about themselves and, you know, people can get to know the players more on a personal level, um, which, yeah, is so cool um, in this day and age. I don't think, you know, back in the day you couldn't really have access to anything like that. Um, and just show, yeah, how they became the players they are. And it'd be awesome to have something like that for Ferns. I think people um, would really like to tell their stories and hopefully the public would really like to hear them. Cool. Anything else from anyone? Don't Bring it home, Blake. Yeah, take it home, brother. <laughs> okay. So thank you for coming on for uh, Claudia. And if you like this video, you can like and subscribe on YouTube. You can find us on all of your favorite audio platforms, whether that be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and everywhere you can get your audio podcast. And we will see you on the next episode.